For much of the late 19th century and the early 20th century, Lowell, Massachusetts represented the cutting edge of a planned industrial city built up around the powerful waterways of New England. A kingdom of brick-walled mills and canals were dug through the heart of Lowell to divert the waters of the Merrimack River to power these new industrial strongholds. But it wasn't until 1835 when the Boston and Lowell Railroad arrived to deliver raw materials and bring out finished products that Lowell truly transformed into an industrial hotspot. The Boston and Lowell Railroad was the product of an early 19th century boomtown. Once a village of only a dozen or so houses dubbed East Chelmsford, the falls and the rapids here hinted at a greater importance, and soon mills powered by waterways sprung up, and so did the population, to 6,474 people by 1830, which compared to 4,600 in Hartford and 6,700 in Springfield was rather remarkable. The Middlesex Canal was an early solution to the freight and transportation problems that plagued the movement of goods from Lowell to Boston, yet few passengers ever really traversed the route. The architects of Lowell's prominence, among them Kirk Boot, whose name later adorned the great Boot Mill, decided that Lowell must have better transportation, and the rumors of steam-powered rail transportation seemed to offer a solution. With fish belly rails bolted at first to stone sleepers, the Boston and Lowell became one of the very first railroads in North America, and the first major one in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The first track was completed in 1835, and freight service began immediately. On May 27, 1835, it made its maiden trip to Boston. The Boston and Lowell later became a major railroad system in New England with five divisions in Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. After several decades in fierce competition with the nearby Boston and Maine Railroad, the Boston and Lowell was leased to the B&M on April 1, 1887. The railroad business in Lowell was busy. All along the track running to Merrimack Street, various tracks branched off in different directions. Tight curves crossed over canals and ran down alleyways to serve various warehouses, storerooms, mills, and factories. Beyond the passenger station at Merrimack Street, the tracks fanned out to serve a wide variety of factories and mills located all up and down the west bank of the Merrimack River. Sharp curves and close clearances called for small, tiny O4OT and O4O steam switchers, which kept busy hustling 30-foot wooden box cars and other freight cars over the tracks that twisted in and out of these factories. One of the best known of these tiny steamers was O4OT number 56, built by Baldwin in 1903 which ran for a number of years with shrouding enclosing its boiler. Later, the locomotive was stripped of its shrouding and continued to operate with a more conventional appearance. She was scrapped in 1925. In later years, the Boston and Maine Railroad utilized their smaller diesel switchers along the corporation spur, namely their EMD SW1s. The American Freedom Train was even exhibited along the corporation spur during the bicentennial frenzy of 1975. The Boston and Maine went on servicing the corporation spur into the early 1980s when Guilford Transportation Industries purchased the Boston and Maine. Despite the change up in ownership, there was still some freight business in this part of Lowell, and it was not uncommon to see larger GP7 or GP9 locomotives running up the spur into the early 1990s. Without a doubt, the crown jewel of the railroad history in Lowell, and especially on the old corporation spur, is this, former Boston and Maine G11A class 060 switcher, number 410. 410 has an incredibly interesting history tied in not only with the Boston and Maine Railroad, but also with the Boston and Maine Railroad Historical Society, and has become a wonderful addition to the railroad fabric here in Lowell, Massachusetts. Number 410 was built by the Manchester Locomotive Works of Manchester, New Hampshire in 1911. The squat little 060s played a variety of roles on the Boston and Maine, swapping out coaches in the big yards at passenger terminals, working in freight yards and on industrial tracks, and even working freight on urban branch lines and lines with weight restrictions. Although they put in decades of good service, they were rendered obsolete by diesel engines in the late 1940s and 1950s, and were retired and scrapped. Number 410, however, was spared that fate 
when she was sold secondhand to the H.E. Fletcher Granite Company in nearby Westford, Massachusetts on June 29, 1950. 410 worked in the quarries at Fletcher and shuttled product to the Boston and Maine Interchange until her flu time expired and she was replaced by another retired B&M steam switcher, number 444, in April 1952. After her retirement by H.E. Fletcher, number 410 sat derelict on the property for decades and became something of a legend for local rail fans. A ghostly Boston and Maine remnant in the weeds and bushes still surviving with the future in question. Later, 410 was acquired by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for preservation at the Museum of Science in Boston and was moved to the Boston and Maine shops at North Billerica, Massachusetts on September 26, 1979. This plan was never realized, however, and 410 languished at Billerica for several years, her future once again looking dim. With the efforts of national, state, and local agencies, 410 was acquired by the federal government with plans to display the locomotive here in Lowell. The Boston and Maine Railroad Historical Society began its involvement with the engine in 1992 when a group of our members led by Jim Nixis began working on the engine at North Billerica. 410 was towed to Lowell by a Springfield Terminal Freight Extra on July 17, 1993. By the time it arrived at Lowell, 410 had been scraped, painted, and lettered by National Park Service and Boston and Maine Railroad Historical Society volunteers. At that time, the Springfield Terminal, aka Guilford Rail System, was still operating freight on the old corporation spur in Lowell, so 410 was towed to its current location along Dutton Street and then craned onto an adjacent display track where it remains today on display. The Society's 410 Committee, still headed up by Jim Nixis, repairs and cosmetically renovates the locomotive. Also on display here on the old corporation spur in downtown Lowell is this, former Boston and Maine Combine number 1244, which along with the 410 has an incredibly interesting history. Number 1244 is set up as a combination coach baggage car, known by railroaders as a combine, but was actually built by the Pullman Company in July 1907 as a standard passenger coach. The car is 60 feet and 2 inches in length, and has open platforms at each end. Built as number 1244, it was renumbered to 244 in 1930, and rebuilt as maintenance of way car M3031 at the Concord shops in Concord, New Hampshire in September 1946. The car was sold to Luria Brothers in 1962, and then led a nomadic life in the 1960s and 1970s on the St. Johnsbury and Lamoille County Railroad of Vermont, the Montpelier and Barry Railroad of Vermont, and the Goodwin Railroad of New Hampshire, where it was maintained by its then owner and Goodwin employee, Richard Mauser. Following brief periods of storage on the Boston and Maine's Gonic Branch in Rochester and at Wolfboro Falls on the Wolfboro Railroad, 1244 came to Lowell and opened to the public in June 1993. The car today is owned by the Lowell Historic Preservation Commission, and the section of track on which it sits is land owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, adjacent to the site of the original Boston and Lowell Station at the corner of Merrimack and Dutton Streets. The Boston and Maine Railroad Historical Society displays items from our hardware collection in the Combine, along with a beautiful HO scale model railroad, and an attractive exhibit, The History of Railroads in Lowell, also opened to the public in June 1993, made possible with a grant from the Lowell Historic Preservation Commission. The B&M RRHS and the National Park Service share the responsibility for maintaining the car. Today the Combine delights visitors in the summer, especially during the annual Folk Festival, where thousands of visitors step back in time to appreciate the impact that the Boston and Maine Railroad and its predecessors had on the fabric, pun intended, of nearly every facet of life in the communities that they served. If you look at old maps in the Lowell Historical Society, or possibly in our own archives as well, you'll notice many changes to the corporation spur over the years as factories were built and torn down, as city streets were relocated and widened. But the bulk of the corporation track remains the same today, including many of the curving spurs, like this bridge here over the canal. 
Today the Corporation Track is used by the National Park Service with vintage trolleys to provide tours throughout the old mill complex. It's one of the few places in the country where railroad tracks have been converted into trolley use.